us. Look at us. You know, I feel like we go into a lot of these saying, "Man, not a lot has not a lot has happened in in our in our uh, realms of of things we talk about." But man, this uh, this time, there's been a lot of stuff in the past couple. Yeah, weeks. it's chunky. It is. It's a chunky. It's a chunky ex existence we got out here. I mean, there's we just we, there's so many there's so many even personal things to discuss. I've I've had a great week personally. I don't know about you. I've had a, an average week. Oh well. I get, it is like that sometimes. Okay. Swimming is about to start up again, so I'm going to have to be coaching again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, welcome back to the 60-hour work week. <laughs> the, the, you're on that grind. I'm I'm on something. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm on something. That is for sure. Sam. Yes. We're, we're, nearing, we're nearing 50 episodes of this, the Dungeon Bros podcast. We are. We are nearing two years. We need... Fuck's sake. That's stupid. <laughs> and we've only, like, a month ago figured out how to do this, like, consistently where the audio is not complete shit. Uh, I can't wait listening back to this later when it's going to be uh, complete shit and wrong. So that'll be... That'll be a fun experience. But... This isn't episode 50. No. This is episode 47 of the Dungeon Bros Podcast. And I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. We are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. We do talk about D&D. &D and MTG. And TTRPGs and several other acronyms, probably. Nerds love their acronyms. I, I love. I, I, I feel like the love of the acronym has come about simply because of the the texting. You think? Yeah. I mean, it truly, it truly begin with like the old school texting with the number pad where you had. Oh to hit yeah, the T, the T eight number yeah. pad. Yeah, you had to hit the two like like six times if you wanted a capital C. Yep. You know so. You, they you had to develop shorthand, of course, in that in that realm. These days, I feel like we've moved past it. People should be typing in full sentences. I think it's kind of lazy now. I use swipe to type most of the time, I and mean, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. I could never, I could never relearn how to do that. So I'm not even going to try at this point in my life. It's one of those weird things where it's like, oh, it was because uh, I had an Android when swipe to type first came out, which is where it mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this is new and, and unique, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to use it. But then I'm like. You find yourself like laying in bed and one handed is why because you're like ah I don't have the energy but I, I it helps me I, from I, the spelling I do the tap I do the tap to type one handed I've got the big old I got the big old hands I got the pianist hands mm, the penis a little bit hands. the penis hands exactly um, and I can get my thumb all the way across the screen so mm. I don't have to do that do I have to like extend it a little bit too far probably probably but I'm not I'm not I'm not one handed texting very often that's fair it's a whole it's a whole thing. We're not here to talk about texting. No. Uh, this episode of the Dungeon Bird Podcast is sponsored by uh, that one tiefling in Baldur's Gate 3 that wants to fuck you really bad, but she won't because she's scared that she's going to physically burn you because her body is, like, actually physically hot. You know Baldur's that? Gate 3, now out on PC, coming to PlayStation 5, September 3rd. Thank you for sponsoring the Dungeon Bird Podcast. Not an actual sponsor. Not an actual sponsor. Do you remember that, uh, that, meme, sponsor. That, that meme that was going around where it's like... Uh, the 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 D and D story where the guy who was playing a tiefling decided to have sex with a fire elemental. They mm -hmm. took half damage from fire. Still ended up dying in, in character, but I'm, well, I mean, the player was dead. No, um, here's the, here's the thing. You're taking fire damage. It's it's ra like fire elementals. They can like occupy your space. Yeah. So like. Even if you're taking half damage, like how many rounds of combat are you? La you're gonna last like a. Are you gonna last a minute? I mean, I, I've I've heard t I've heard tale of some men that aren't able to last more than like five to ten seconds, but um, I mean, if you're if you're confident enough to try and fuck fire elemental, I don't think. <laughs> I'm just vaguely wondering if this is what the developers were referencing. <laughs> That'd be Cause funny because that, that's a couple year old meme. That is a good meme. That is a good meme. Good meme. Anyway, Baldur's Gate three. All of my friends are uh, my co -work not my friends, my coworkers, mm -hmm. and Darren, who is our friend. Yes obsessed with it right now like completely obsessed my friend Michaela Mick makes magic on TikTok and all of the other things um she doesn't really play video games like at all mm -hmm. but Baldur's Gate 3 has like taken over her entire personality so that's a thing sure I guess uh, we haven't played it yet nope um I specifically haven't played it because uh, I have a PS5 and it doesn't come to a PS5 until September 3rd yeah yeah, that's a whole thing. But since the last episode of the podcast, so I think some major things have occurred. Yes. Chief amongst them, we just got back from Gen Con two weeks ago, which is phenomenal. 
Mm-hmm. It was much better than the first time go. Yeah, we, we definitely improved upon our strategy this year. Mm-hmm. I think we have improvements for the strategy next year as well. I agree. Um, the whole having the whole getting an Airbnb with a ton of people was really fun. Yeah. Thirty minute drive. A little to rough. get to the, you know not nearly as not it wasn't the move fun. wasn't the move it wasn't the move definitely definitely want to keep the Airbnb tight and then just have friends come over mm-hmm. try to keep it close to the convention hall so it's easy to do that yeah you know um, of course the Air D and D we were staying with our our TikTok friends from the role playing degenerates uh, Steve uh, and his wife and and Cisco um, uh, the bearded DM was there Mr Dandy DM was there. Uh, of course, our friends and some other friends of, of the people staying there. It was a wonderful time. It was a wonderful weekend. Had a grill out. We played a lot of Magic the Gathering. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play, Cisco got like this, um, this like the, the little like a robot deck building, like yeah, like uh, like battle bots kind of vibe thing. That was really fun. Yeah, it was a cross between a deck builder game and a and a regular board game, yeah, fighting the, game. The miniatures like kind of had. They're, they 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 kind of had like a Funko Pop vibe to them, but they, they were like cute because they're robots and not like characters, but I was kind of into it. Yeah, it was a fun little game. It was a fun time. We also played a lot of Magic the Gathering at the convention. Uh, it was the release weekend of Commander Masters. Mm-hmm. So Commander Masters stuff was abound. We did the pre-con event for Commander Masters. Uh, I got the enchantment deck. You got the Planeswalker. Planeswalker deck. Yeah. You, you were displeased. I mean, I'm not... It just the Planeswalker deck was not the one I wanted, necessarily, mm. because uh, Planeswalkers, when you play a lot of Planeswalkers all at once, it gets complicated. Yeah. Uh, and my, my stupid little brain doesn't like that. Mm, your stupid little white boy pea brain. Anyway. Little smooth brain. You got brain... <laughs> oh, wow. I just... I thought of an old internet, the, the, the fake dating service video. <laughs> Where it's like, I got brains, I got big old brain, I got I got dinosaur I got dinosaur brains. Weren't dinosaurs brains really small? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. My my, fa- my family knows that meme very well and my siblings don't listen to this podcast, but if they did, they would they would they'd they chuckle about that. Just tell them just to listen to this episode. Yeah. But the the Commander Precon events at Gen Con, I think, are some of the better magic events to partake in, just generally. Um you can kind of just show up. If you don't know how to play, you can kind of can kind of pick it up a little bit. Uh, the decks were being sold at MSRP, even though MSRP doesn't really exist. Sold, yeah. It was, it was basically you were getting the deck for sixty bucks, and then you paid another ten to partake in a commander event, and then you got some prize wall tickets. Afterwards. Prize tickets. We like playing with strangers, yeah. different people. Yeah, um, we 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 went when we went to SCG Con in Cincinnati a couple weeks ago, and then here again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we a couple of our friends don't enjoy that, which is fine. I was I was a big fan of that. Personally. I we met some very nice people. Oh yeah, These, some kids who were uh, I call them kids. They were probably in their early twenties, and we're in our late twenties. Yeah, but I mean, uh, we're nearing thirty. Yeah, we're 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 almost over the edge of of feasible of feasible happiness. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a weird dark turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the enchantment deck is really fun. I'm a big fan. Very big fan. That seems like a fun deck. Love enchantments. Uh, we also did the Lord of the Rings precon decks. We both got um, Riders of Rohan. Yes, Riders of <laughs> Rohan. Very, very strong precon. Mm-hmm. I would say good time. Not great the first couple turns, but in a four player game, you can kind of sneak by. Yeah. For like three, four turns, and then you're gonna start fucking popping off, and it's great. Really good time. Uh, we also got invited uh, by our friend Randy over at the Forged Realms. He invited us to a Loot Studios like influencer private play test uh, for a game that they're working on. If you don't know who Loot Studios are. Uh, they they've they they're creators of uh, 3D printable miniature STL files. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do packs every month, and they're some of the most well respected um, uh, third party miniature makers mm-hmm. in the space right now. Uh, if you if you're familiar with a lot of popular YouTubers, um, um, the Miniature Maniac, uh, Black Magic Craft, those kinds of D and D YouTubers that really focus on the miniature side and wargaming, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Loot Studios and sponsoring them forever. That's where I recognize them from. But with all their miniatures, they did the. They have this really cool like war game slash deck building one v one, like three player for like. I, it, it's kind of open ended. Yeah, it's kind of combines magic uh, with or any sort of or flesh and blood is also one I've heard mm-hmm. uh, that and Warhammer, but on the scale of like D and D. Yes, it's actually really really fun. It's called Relics Untold. They've announced its existence. Uh, they have a logo <laughs> reveal and an interview with uh, Tracy Hickman, who did the lore. He's one of the writers for Dragonlance. 
which was really cool. Uh, but yeah, we got to go and play test the game. It was really, really fun. Uh, I still need to make a TikTok on it. I've I've just been enjoying it this week. That's fair. If, if if I'm being completely honest, I've kind of I think we both kind of just passively have been like, all right, it's after Gen Con, let's just vibe for a sec. Yeah, and then we'll get back into things. Uh, but I want to make a I want to make a TikTok about that because it was really cool. I got some cool footage. Um, really highly recommend. Uh, we'll we'll probably talk more about that when it gets close to release. Yeah, and I would love to actually play that more when it comes out. Uh, but the highlight of that event <laughs> was not the loot studio part. No, 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 not at all, not at all. This is uh, this is Dungeon Bros story time with Connor, and later Sam when Sam enters the story. Yes. For this play, t- for this little play test of this game, we had to go to a nearby mall in Indianapolis uh, to the convention center. It was a couple blocks away. Uh, there's like this like rent an office for a day it's a co-hatch of, yeah a co-hatch Plenty, lots of cities have them and we weren't being let in there was like there were a bunch of like the forged realm was out there there were some other creators that we didn't know and then us like we were waiting outside the front and it was locked and a guy who had like a roll 20 and drive through rpg shirt on came up and he's like uh what are you all doing here we're like oh we have a play test with loot studios he's like i don't think any of them are here there were some of them there. Uh, but later, some Loot Studios guys showed up, and they let us in. Um, we were like, that was really weird. Uh, we ended up, do, they did their little presentation, talked about the game, explained the rules. We play tested it, had a wonderful time. We were about an hour and a half in. Uh, they were offering snacks and drinks and water and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, and I had to go to the bathroom. Uh, another, another creator also had to go to the bathroom, and the lead game designer, who was awesome. He also had like a lot of cool piercings. Oh, he was super cool. He he was he was so much cooler than anyone anyone I've ever seen in real life. Yes, it was ridiculous. And he he's looked, foreign. He was he wasn't American. No, he looked he looked like uh like the cool uh, Egyptian characters from Yu Gi Oh that had like all the piercings and stuff. He looked badass. He looked like he was gonna send me to the Shadow Realm. Hmm. Is what I'm saying here. He was cool. He was very awesome. He was uh, a super nice guy. Yeah, all but, of them super nice. But we needed to go to the bathroom, so we all we all got up. And we went to the bathroom. Uh, when we got in there, there was someone at the urinal. So the lead game designer and I were waiting uh, and then this other guy ran into the stall we are just kind of making some idle chit chat for like 10 seconds and then this person steps back and I see a side profile a side profile that I, that I vaguely recognize I'm like huh is that is that Matt and then the this figure turns to me and he's like oh I didn't realize there, there was anyone waiting here you go uh, Matthew fucking Mercer <laughs> for those of you that don't know Matthew Mercer of, of Critical Role fame the DM, God Among Nerds, <laughs> amazing, talented voice actor. Um, I met him with his dick in his hand. <laughs> it's a, a statement of fact. Indeed. I literally was like, oh, you're Matt Mercer. I'm not going to bother you in a bathroom. And I went to the urinal and he like chuckled a little bit. And then him and the lead game designer went outside after he washed hands and they were like chit-chatting outside. And while they did that, I was like, I can't believe I just, I said out loud, I can't believe I just met Matt Mercer in a bathroom. And then the guy in the stall was like, wait, you what? That who, what? (laughs) And then he like quickly flushed. And I was like, this is Matt Mercer. He's in the hallway. He's like, oh fuck. Ran like did the quickest, like two second hand wash I've ever seen in my entire life. Ran outside. It is at this moment I'm I'm like giggling to myself and I'm washing my hands and I reach to my pocket for a phone because I would like a selfie or a picture with Matthew Mercer as anyone would. Sure. Horror comes upon me. I've been using my phone to track point like life points and score yeah. and stuff for the for the game. I left it at the table. I was like shit. I talk I talk to this I, I go outside. He's still talking. Matt is still talking to the Loot Studios guy and so that influencer is just kind of like hanging out there. I was like hey hey. I left my phone in the fucking room to track points. If if I take a picture for you, will you take a picture for me and text me? He's like, absolutely. Like, my, my man, my fucking G. So, of course, Matt, Matt is like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're all just kind of laying low here. We were flying out in a couple hours. Makes sense why we were told we weren't allowed into this place. Because mm-hmm. if, if people saw the fucking cast of Critical Role, probably plus Brendan Lee Mulligan, maybe Abria Iyengar and some other fucking people, uh, walking around and then going into the mall and then going into a cohatch, word might spread and yeah. then they might just get mobbed. So they were just not letting, they were just making sure that people that were supposed to be there were allowed and no one else just so that they wouldn't get mobbed before their flight, which is totally fair. But he was like, he was super nice. He was like so thankful that like we, that we were fans. He was, he was very, very personable. Got a picture with him. It's up on our Instagram. Uh, we also did a Gen Con recap video on TikTok. It's up there. Uh, but after that, me and this other influencer guy walk away while the Loot Studio guy, obviously, he's 
the lead designer for Loot Studio. You've got you got Matt Mercer in front of you. You gotta you gotta make your pitch. Yeah, I totally get that. Uh, so we're walking back. Uh, Randy of the Forge Realm and some other people are in the hallway, and we're like, Matthew Mercer's in the fucking hallway, guys. Guys, Matthew Mercer is in the fucking hallway. Go to the bathroom. They're like, what, what? And then people started going. And then I go back to the room where you are and a bunch of people are still playing the game. And I look at you and I say, Sam, go to the bathroom. And you give me that, you give me that look that you give of, I'm not going to fucking do what you tell me to do. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'm inherently mistrustful and especially of you. And secondarily, you, you were trying to mouth something to me. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, Matthew Mercer. I can't read the, lips. Is in the hole, is in the bathroom. <laughs> And then you just give me the confused look at it and I say, and I like loud whisper, I'm like, Maximo starts in the fucking hallway. <laughs> and at that point I saw like the eyes wide a little bit and then you got up yep. and left. And then I went and sat down where I was and I was clearly, I like had a face and I look over and several people are like looking at me like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And then I waited for a second. I'm like, okay guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted to give my buddy a head start. Uh, and I also don't want to blow up his spot because like clearly they're trying they're trying to lay low but I'm not going to deny this room full of people the opportunity to meet Matt Mercer so I'm like guys I don't want to blow up his spot but Matt Mercer is outside the bathroom right now and if you want to get a picture you probably should and then they just kind of looked and like went wide and they're like are you serious I'm like I'm very serious go <laughs> to the bathroom right now and then people start slowly like grabbing their phones and like getting up and going to the bathroom and then, we're, and then those of us that had that like, were just there like some other like the Randy and them they were coming back and they're like holy shit that was fucking Matthew Merce oh, like all this stuff apparently after you got your picture, Travis Willingham went to the bathroom and people were getting pictures with Travis when... So that's a whole other thing. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So that's that's the big Gen Con story of, uh, of 2023. I also saw Joe Manganiello when I was in line to get a book uh, autographed for my brother as a gift. And yeah. He just happened to be there and I got a selfie with him. He's going through a divorce right now. He's, he's, he's looking a little rough. We love Joe Manganiello though. So it's a whole thing. He had the little he had the little puppy dog with him. But anyway, yeah, uh, the I will forever I will forever have meeting Matt Mercer with his dick in his hand as as an achievement of mine. Do you think that they were all just sitting back in the room when Matt didn't come back and they're like, no one's supposed to be here? Do you think Matt's like struggling in there? <laughs> Travis is actually like, I'm just gonna go check on him real quick. That sounds like something Travis would do. <laughs> And then it's like, oh wait, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of <laughs> bunch of random nerds are here suddenly. Oh yeah, yeah, that check. I mean, they they surely must have known, right? You know, like there's a reason they were going to a cohatch to like chill chill for, for a bit before going to the airport. You know, um, so Gen Con 2023 was great. One more quick thing that at the opening of Gen Con, the the Disney card game Larkana was released. It was the Gen Con was the only place you could get cards for like a week. Yeah. Pre-release if you want to. Pre-release. A pre-release weekend. Gen Con exclusive. Lorcana. And of course, Lorcana has been um, been been high on a lot of people's radars. Mm -hmm. It's been very popular. Uh, and and people were lining up prior to doors open. So like people were starting to line up early in the morning at like 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And the Lorcana room didn't open up until 7. So people lined up. Well, when the doors opened... The employees basically went, yeah, we don't, we're not, we don't have any lines. We didn't set up any lines. We're not wrecking any lines. So what did people do? They fucking storm the booth and like people get trampled Yeah, and people go to the hospital. Now it was, it, it as far as we know, wasn't anything as bad enough to obviously shut down the area. But I mean, by the time we got there on Thursday, we, we rolled up probably at what, like noon 1 p.m ish and we got in line and it was just like the murmur in the line and like gen con was just happening like nothing like we didn't see anything on our way in it was it was just a thing but that's how the con started yes how the con ended was hundreds of thousands of dollars of tcg product just being walked out yep and stolen by people as well so yeah two guys just yeah. found a pallet jack Two rows walked out, with chilling, them. chilling at the Gen Con, stealing hundreds of thousand dollars of cards because they're not gay. Yeah, you know. Uh, did you see the article that our buddy sent us this morning? Yes, about how they they think it might be like some some game designers. Yeah, Gizmodo was uh, was taking uh, uh, or had post put an article up about the fact that some of these game uh, they were wearing the shirts of the game that they were working for or designing, and basically it was like, yeah. Well, if it is actually them, 
They've just they blacklisted fuck. themselves. Oh, the, uh, and obviously, they, of course, they fucked up hard. If that's actually them, and obviously, of course, they're going to do jail time. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like they're not going to get the Pinkertons to come intimidate them. No, they're just getting arrested. Yes, they stole three hundred thousand dollars worth of it's, stuff. Um, a number that pales in comparison to three hundred thousand, though, is two point six million. Yes. Uh, Post Malone bought the the one of one one ring. From the Canadian guy who got it, mm-hmm. which is Luda. Wow. It goes to it goes to fucking Canada. That's some bullshit. But whatever. Well, that's part of why it was point six. Was yeah. He was offering two million, but uh, it was like Canada has some weird tax laws. So yeah. it's like so. Posty was like, "Yeah, I'll give you the extra point six to offset the tax." Perfect. Post Malone. Post Malone is the fucking coolest dude ever. Mm-hmm. Like if you like, we we were talking about this the other day. You look at him, he looks like someone that would be an asshole. But he's actually, like, the coolest, nicest person ever. Into magic. Loves, like, streaming video games. Like, he's he's the fucking goat. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want the one of one ring to go to pretty much anyone else. You hear what he did with it? He invited a bunch of, uh, bunch of like, big-time magic influencers over to play magic. He used it as a treasure token. <laughs> In a game. <laughs> That's about as Post Malone as it gets. Um... I'm going to do that thing later. Uh, SCG Con Columbus, September 1st to 3rd. Sam might be going. I might be going. I'm not going to. I have work. I? I might give you cards to get signed by artists if you go. That's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Accept a brew. Accept a brew. Um, so if you're in, if you're going to the Columbus area for Star City Games Convention, play some, play some TCG, a little bit of Flesh and Blood, a little bit of Magic the Gathering, possibly. Come say hi. Also, go make content while, while you're there. I'll do you my go. best. If you go. Just some videos. It's fine. Anyway, we'll do a quick rundown here. Dungeon Bros. We got a lot of we got a lot of things. We got a link in bio, the, Bink, the Beacons link. Podcast goes live every other week. Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, etc. And on our YouTube channel. We got the TikTok. We got the Instagram. We got the YouTube. We got the, the X. It's now. It's not Twitter anymore. Twitter. It's not Twitter. Discord as well, Amazon Storefront Merch Store, Monday Night Magic live streams every Monday at 9 p.m. live on TikTok. We also got our deck lists on the Moxfield link in the bio. All of that to say, go do those things. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not good at, I'm not good at, I'm not good at, I'm not good at doing the whole. Segways? The, the shilling. Oh, the shilling. Well, let's go on to some segues. So we're going to do upcoming releases, then hit our main items for the day before we wrap up and do some Q&A yes. at the end. Out today, as of the recording of this, the yesterday, as of the posting of this podcast, Bigby presents Glory of the Giants, as well as the Practically Complete Guide to Giants. Uh, next month, September 19th, we're going to get the Fandelver... Air, sorry, sorry. The Practically Complete Guide to Dragons. It's not Giants. Yes. We have the giants, and then also the dragons. One coming yes, out today. Yes, uh, and don't worry, we will be we will be talking about the AI art in in Big B. Yes, we'll we'll do the rundown here soon. But uh, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, is going to be September nineteenth. That's probably the only book that I'm vaguely interested in for D and D five e. That's coming out. Planescape Adventures of the Multiverse, October sixteenth, as well as the Book of Many Things on November fourteenth. The Lord of the Rings secondary set that I'm most excited for is November third. We also got Commander Masters is now out everywhere. Wilds of Eldraine pre release is going to be starting in a couple of weeks on September first, with the launch on September eighth. Doctor Who Commander Decks October thirteenth, and the Lost Cap of Ixalan at some point in 2023 we November of 2023 we do have a wonderful thread on Twitter from wizard at wizards underscore magic about the upcoming releases the newly announced upcoming releases for Magic the Gathering we're going to run through those real quick we're not we're probably not going to have much to say but uh, the next universes beyond tentpole release is going to be final fantasy universes yes. beyond encompassing the first game all the way up through final fantasy 16 i beat final fantasy 16 i need to do a second playthrough on the final fantasy difficulty to get the platinum i don't know if i'm going to be doing that but we'll see it's a great game final fantasy is awesome big big fan 2024 has been revealed and they have a timeline here in q1 we're getting ravnica remastered followed by murders at karlov manor followed by a fallout Universes Beyond release. Yes, commander decks for that one. Exciting. Uh, Q2, we're getting Outlaws of Thunder Junction. That's going to be a new a new universe yes. for Magic the Gathering. That's like cowboys and Wild West and all that kind of stuff. Super cool. 
as well as Modern Horizons 3. So that's going to be the expensive one. <laughs> uh, then in Q3, we're going to get another Universes Beyond with the Assassin's Creed. I believe those are just decks. I believe those are packs. Oh, those are just... Oh, wait, that's right. It's, it's like these... It's mis I think they're uh, Universes Beyond boosters specifically. That's interesting. That's more your vibe. It's more my vibe. I have it, yes, tattooed on my arm. Indeed. Uh, also in Q3, we are getting Bloom Burrow. Another, I believe, new universe. Yes. Another, another new plane. Yes. And Duskmorn House of Horror. Mm -hmm. That is all the that is all they announced for 2024. So we know the whole set, uh, the slate for the for the next year. Do you have any do you have any thoughts? Um, they also announced that they will be doing Jurassic Park um, mm. stuff for Ixalan. Oh, that's right. That's right. Much how they did the Transformer stuff for Brothers, Brothers War. War. Um but yeah, I've I've seen a lot of people complain as as people are are to do. Um, they often like to do that. But uh, a lot of the f a lot Fallout has come under a lot of fire because they're like it doesn't fit the setting, and it's like well it kind of fits the setting just as much as I get it. Matt Wizards of the Coast is kind of going with the um, with the Fortnite, just kind of gun down any sort of uh, IP that you can and add it in. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, Fallout Fallout's a, a good series, and I'm interested to see what they do with it. Uh, yeah, they also announced they're doing a like Magic the Gathering Ravnica Clue edition, yeah. which is not just a reskin of Clue, but a new way to play Magic, and they don't really talk about that at all, which is a little bit weird. I'm sure we'll know. We'll hear more as it approaches. Yeah, they also they also showed off uh, the next um, the next secret lair commander deck, which is going to be Angels. Mm -hmm. Love 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 that tribal, love it sure, but you know. Until we start seeing cards and getting pre-release, it doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about all of the properties they're partnering with. It's fine. I I I, I get that they're. The, I get both sides of it. I get Wizards of the Coast being like, we want to make as much money as possible, but also the designers being like, hey, you know, we we found somebody cool to work with, and like the the Warhammer, mm -hmm. um, the Warhammer ones were great. The Lord of the Rings ones were great. Oh, Lord Let's, of the Rings set's probably my favorite set. But let's see what biased. we yeah. What, let's see what we what cool stuff we can make with all of this. Yes, I'm very excited. I would love I would love if the the Final Fantasy set is good. <laughs> that would make me very happy. <laughs> um, as far as as far as the the other the more classic quote unquote um, Match the Gathering sets, uh, Ravnica remastered is probably going to be fine. Uh, Murders at Karlov Manor will be interesting, I'm sure. I mean, I'm interested to see what they're doing with a new magic universe with the Wild West, mm -hmm. with Gloomhaven. Uh, see, it's, they're getting a little bit more, a little bit more weird. They also said that they want to return to things like Strixhaven, yeah, in the, in the future of 2025 and all that. But nothing is really confirmed. They've definitely introduced a lot. Of, you know, they've been they've been fil filtering in some new planes over the past couple of years, and so oh yeah, there there are a lot of sets that are just like oh we've been to this plane once. Let's go again. What's going on? Exactly. So, before we get into the stories, let's just do a quick rundown. We're going to be talking about the AI art in Bigby Presents the Glory of the Giants, which is hilarious. <laughs> the, the entire situation is funny to me. Uh, also, D&D, &D, uh, Jeremy Crawford at Gen Con said that they're going to be revisiting, quote unquote, classic campaign settings. Whatever the fuck that means. But, you know, whatever. Also, we're going to talk about the reception to Baldur's Gate 3 and how some people think that it kind of improves on what 5e is doing in some ways. And then we're just going to wrap it up with with Dagger Heart stuff and some other things, maybe. Anyway, AI art in Big B presents the glory of the giants. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons responds after an artist's admit after an artist admits to submitting AI enhanced art for Big B presents the glory of the giants. The now released source book contains artwork that is, quote, enhanced AI, although Wizards of the Coast says they are updating the artist guidelines to prevent future AI art from being submitted. Earlier this week, uh, Ilya Shkipin, Sh Shkipin, S-H-K-I-P-I-N, what do you want me to do with that? I don't know what to do with, I don't know what you, I don't know what they expect me to do with that, with that name. I don't know what... Uh... Ilya stated that he had used AI tools to, quote, enhance several pieces commissioned by Wizards of the Coast for Bigby Presents Glory and the Giants. 
Ilya has worked with Wizards of the Coast for the past for past D and D pieces as well, with the artist credited as the concept illustrator for the Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and credited as an interior artist in both the original Monster Manual and the Dungeon Master's Guide. In recent years, Ilya's work has had has had Ilya's work had turned towards. Okay, I'd had to. That's a hold. Writing, guys. Uh, had turned towards digital and AI art with him launching an NFT company in October of 2021. The pieces of art are not fully AI generated, but rather use AI tools to touch up or clean up pieces of the artwork. We'll note that given the time frame for a D&D book's development cycle, AI art wasn't as prevalent as it was today when an art piece was likely turned in. However, the artwork in question still features some of the hallmarks of AI artwork with strange fingers and identical joints. While Ilya admitted that he had used AI tools to, quote, enhance concept illustrations and work, Wizards of the Coast claimed they were unaware that Ilya had used AI until this week. A representative for Dungeons & Dragons told comicbook.com, which is a source we're reading this from, that Wizards was unaware that AI was used to create the pieces in question and that the artwork was commissioned over two years ago and was turned in over 18 months ago. Additionally, the representative said that in response to the situation, Dungeons & Dragons would be updating its artist guidelines to clarify that AI-generated or enhanced art is not to be used. Additionally, Ilya stated on X, formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> that the pieces were, quote, being discussed and that they were going to be, quote, reworked after the controversy. Likely, this means that artwork will be replaced in future print runs of Bigby Presents, Glory of the Giants, and on D&D Beyond. Other RPG publishers have since committed to banning the use of AI art, including Paizo. When discussing the situation with Wizards, a representative for the company noted that Dungeons & Dragons was made by humans for humans, and they would try to make that clear to artists moving forward. We knew that this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Surely, people must have known that this was going to happen. I mean, we've, we've we talked about last podcast episode, I believe, uh, where, you know, even even up to a year and a half ago, when this thing was apparently turned in, we were starting to see the uh, the the discourse on mm-hmm. AI generated art. And there were lawsuits going around and and everything. AI has come to the forefront. Oh, yeah. Um, so that being said, you know, it, is this the worst crime that's been committed uh, in Dungeons and, and Dragons um, IP history this past year? No. I mean, AI art has has a place, and it. I do think that it's it's not really going to be able to replace actual artist made works of art. Um, it might be indistinguishable in quality in a couple of years. Like I, I can absolutely see that because it's already and even in the last like six to eight months, mm-hmm. we've gone from, Ooh, AI art, generate me a picture of Kermit the frog in Seinfeld. And then if you like hold your phone away from you and you squint your eyes, you're like, Oh, I could totally, I could vaguely see how that's Kermit in a Seinfeld episode. But like somebody broke his neck and, and twisted uh, Jerry yeah, into a twist- donut. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And now you can generate images of Trump running from the police officers in New York City as they arrest him, and uh, it looks very real. It's already gotten that much better. By the time 2024, 2025, like, they might, the quality might be indistinguishable from photographs or human made art. I do think that that opens up the door, though, for artists as a new selling point for their art as being handmade by a human with no AI mm-hmm. assistance. Especially if they're going to, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be uh, hired to do art, mm-hmm. then you, you know, you need to disclose. Art. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Th- I do think there is going to need to be some adjustments to policies and maybe even law about disclosures of human versus AI generated works Mm -hmm. and where those lines are being drawn specifically. Um, I wholly support the artists that are vehemently against AI using their pieces of work Mm -hmm. uh, to train AI models. I think that is very, very fair. People, they should not just, these AI companies should not be just scrubbing the internet for images to train their AI models. Mm -hmm. They should be commissioning works or hiring people specifically to just make pieces of art for them to train their own AI or go to like... Uh, commercial commons and that kind of stuff to train AI models instead of actual artists. 
You have any other thing? Any other things to say? No, no. But let's move on into uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We'll revisit classic campaign of settings. Uh, D&D does not view the recent revivals of Spelljammer, Planescape, and other campaign settings as, quote, one-shots, and plans to revisit at least some of these worlds in the future. At Gen Con, uh, comicbook.com, the source that we use for most things because they actually write up good quality things about D&D generally, has had the chance to speak with lead rules game designer Jeremy Crawford in a wide-ranging interview about the future of Dungeons & Dragons in the revised 2024 rules version of the Player's Handbook. During said interview, he was asked about D&D's plans for its campaign settings, especially as Wizards of the Coast, quote, revisited many classic settings, such as Planescape, Spelljammers, and Ravenloft in recent years. Quote, our campaign setting books are are very popular, Crawford said. People love the setting books that we've done, whether they're classic ones or new ones from Magic the Gathering, and they're often our most popular books. He also stated that he didn't look at the recent campaign setting books as quote one offs, one shots, and that they were plan that there were plans to return to many of those campaign settings in the future. We love the campaign setting books because they help highlight just how wonderful and rich D and D is. Crawford said, "They highlight that D and D can be gothic horror, D and D can be fantasy in space, D and D can be trippy adventures in the afterlife in terms of planescape, D and D can be classic high fantasy in the form of the Forgotten Realms. It can be a sort of steampunk light fantasy in Eberron. We feel it's vital to re- to visit these settings and tell stories in them. We look forward to returning to them, so we do not view these as one shots. In fact, Crawford noted that upcoming 2024 rules revision provides more opportunities to be re- to revisit these worlds, in part because the D&D design team doesn't have to keep going back to remake certain rule systems or rule books going forward. Quote, this is another boon of the rules version of the rules revision. It means we can keep journeying into the multiverse rather than sort of having the, to reset the clock. The rules revisions means then we can return and do different things. The next time we visit a setting, look at it through the, through a different angle, explore different parts of the setting, dig deeper into certain areas than we did before. If you imagine fifth edition as a D and D campaign, it means the campaign can keep going. So we are going to get to high level and see things that we haven't seen before. He was, he was also asked about the release timing regarding some of these campaign setting books as Eberron, Dragonlance, and Spelljammer have barely been revisited since their initial campaign setting books were released for 5th edition. Crawford noted that part of the issue is that D&D design team wants players to actually use the material they publish instead of flooding the market with too many books. They're also mindful of how much content can people actually use in any given year, Crawford said. Like many people, I love deep dives into the various settings because I'm a D&D fan first. I've been a D&D fan since I was six years old. It's so fun to get all of that detail. But we also know after years of looking at groups' play patterns, if we give you too much information, really all we've done is given you a bunch of material you have no time to use. So our approach is to spread it out more, to give people time to actually play the adventures they bought, to actually visit the campaign setting they just acquired. Holy fuck, it is about time. <laughs> We've been saying this for a long time, uh, as, as most of the community has, which is we, we don't need you to, yeah, pump out all this new stuff exp- or old stuff, revisit, whatever. We don't need you to give us more material because we already have a bunch of material. And like in the case of things like Spelljammer, mm-hmm. um, those those books, they don't have enough. They're, yeah, they're they're lacking. They're not. There were huge criticisms of them, even though it's like a super cool and unique uh, addition to D&D. Yeah, they were hyping it up. And then once people started to get the books in hand and realized how paper thin they were, Mm -hmm. thin in content, thin in quality, thin in like literal size, it, it wasn't a good look. One last quote that I want to talk about here. This is from Jeremy Crawford as well. We feel the real magic of D&D happens at the table. As much as we love creating these books, we love reading them, we're DMs. We also experience the joy of preparing for adventures and building campaign settings. As fun as all that is, the real alchemy, the wonder that beats at the heart of D&D happens when you're playing it. Because that's when those stories arise that no one imagined when they were preparing the game. That's when there are going to be moments that surprise even the dungeon master and make people gasp or cry or laugh or shudder in terror if it's a horror game. And so for us, that's why play is so important, because that is the heart of the entire game. I want to I wanted to reiterate that 
because we talk a lot of shit about Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot of shit about Hasbro. Rightfully so. Yes. At the core, the people making D&D are people like Jeremy Crawford. And I want to I want to continue to reiterate that that we might not agree with what Wizards of the Coast is doing, and a lot of the people that are making the fucking game and making these books don't agree either. Yeah, it's their job. Jeremy Crawford is an amazing person. He's an amazing game designer, for one. And yes, I would love to revisit these classic settings, but the specific the specific line of we've been making too much stuff, the quality is going down. We're going to spread things out so you can actually use the products is like music to my fucking ears, dude. <laughs> like this is what we've been this is what we've been advocating for. What many people in the community have been advocating for for a very, very long time. Oh yeah. I mean it it's also one of those things where it's like a lot of, you know, the best way to get, you know, for them to make money would be to bring in more people. Mm-hmm. But it was people probably don't feel the 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 ability to come in when it's like, here's a new book. I didn't even get the, oh, here's a new book. Ow, here's a new book. And it's like, okay, well, what if we instead be like, all right, once a year we're going to put out something real cool and and we're building up the hype and it's actually going to be hype worthy for the next year. Here's the thing. I think I think it would be great if they did a book a quarter and they and they rotated through. Here's a campaign setting. Here's the here's an adventure in that setting. Here's a rules edition like Xanathar's Tasha, something like that. And then you just rotate through that. Setting, adventure, rules edition. Setting, adventure, rules edition. One a quarter. That's like a perfect release schedule for mm-hmm. D&D books in my mind. Maybe you replace one of them with like a big, a big update to the game. Like Tasha's was a big update to the game. You know, mm-hmm. maybe maybe one of them is a whole new monster manual. Maybe one of them's like a, a new a, a new like fancy dungeon master's guide that's got new things and new ideas and all of that kind of stuff. Um, again, I want to reiterate, from August to the end of this year, Bigby Presents Glory of the Giants, a practically complete guide to dragons, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse, and the Book of Many Things. Well, that's not even until the end of the year. That's just until halfway through November. From August, September, October, November. That is four months, five releases. That is way too much. Way too much. And you know what? I don't really give a shit about any of them. Most people don't give a shit about any of them. People are clowning on Bigby Presents the Glory of the Giants. Oh, yeah. I'm sure the content in it is fine. Mm -hmm. Look at it online. (laughs) Like, the Practical Complete Dragons is just a lore book uh, there, too. Yeah, it's it's rough. Uh, We love Jeremy Crawford. We're excited for... There's a lot of reasons we're excited for one D&D. I think this should be one of them. I get people are, are, are... are shitting and pissing themselves about D and D these days, and that's totally fair. That is very fair. But if Jeremy Crawford, if what he's saying is true, if it's not just lip service, I think we, I think we'll be all right. I think one D and D might be the the course correction that we need, and we all want that to be the case. Let's just hope that we can keep uh, the greedy fingers of those who do um, who do investor calls out of our game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Last of the meaty stories. Let's talk about Baldur's Gate 3. First off, Metacritic score, 97 out of 100. Yeah. Lots of perfect scores. User score, equally impressive at a 9.2. User score is notorious for being way off from critic scores. Yeah. This one's quite close. And the fact that it's over 9 is like a plurality of people. More than a plurality of people are loving Baldur's Gate 3, such that some people think that it actually improves and fixes some of the problems that Dungeons & Dragons have struggled with for many, many years. Baldur's Gate 3 is quite possibly one of the most enjoyable adaptations of tabletop role-playing juggernaut Dungeons & Dragons that's ever graced a hard drive. However, Larian Studios' latest offering earns a place amongst the best RPGs not by being 100% faithful to the source material, but by knowing when to play fast and loose with D&D orthodoxy. Though D&D 5th Edition creates a strong and consistent rules framework, Larian Studios had to take more than make more than a few changes to create the playground it was looking to build if it was going to create a title to rival the best RPGs. So, let's take health potions, for instance. 
In 5th edition rules as written, potions had to be administered to a single target. Their utility is cut and dry. However, in Baldur's Gate 3, characters can throw potions, causing them to burst open, providing an effect over a wide area. Immediately, whole new worlds of strategic possibility open up. I think they stole that from Minecraft. <laughs> With they the probably did. <laughs> they actually, they actually probably did. The help action. Baldur's Gate Three places great emphasis on how players manage pressure on their party, diverting, diverting. God, I, I can't fucking read today. Diverting from D and D as written by changing several key actions in the action economy as well. Traditionally, the help action in D and D is used to boost an ally's role on a specific task, allowing them to roll two dice and pick the highest. In Baldur's Gate Three, however, help is used to revive downed allies, bringing them back to a single hit point. So it's it's. Yeah, it's just the, they're using the same kind of names, but they're giving it more video game utility. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah, it's, it's a, a down but not out is a sort of normal thing in a video game. One thing that is going to be coming up in future D&D releases, Baldur's Gate 3 also spices up weapon attacks by giving each weapon type its own set of unique moves, usually refreshing every short rest. These techniques help to give the different weapons on offer a real sense of variance and diversity. For instance, sword users can use a bonus action to hit their enemy with a pommel strike, potentially dazing the target and making them vulnerable to further attacks. By contrast, archers can aim a hamstring, bu- uh, can fire a hamstring shot reducing the enemy movement on a successful hit. And of course, in vanilla D&D, a lot of the weapons are very, very similar. Uh, with uh, one D&D, they're introducing the weapon mastery system and where you're going to have more utility for your various uh, weapon options as well. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, highly recommend from the people that I know in my circles mm-hmm. right now. They're saying, Connor, why are you not playing it? I'm like, it's not on PS5 yet. <laughs> and I'm not playing it on my laptop. And my computer... Uh, was fried by lightning. So that's where we're at with that. Do you think you're going to check out Baldur's Gate 3? Yeah, I think at first I was not I was not too uh, too hype on it. But once it dropped and I've actually seen a bunch of these things, I'm like, okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a go. You know, also the price point is not uh, is is at the normal. It's, it's, yeah, it's not a it's not a super elevated price point like I was kind of expecting it to be. I, I, I with the size and breadth and quality of that game, I could have seen them charging like a hundred dollars for it. Um, but also, one of my favorite uh, favorite things was when the game came out. So when it when it, uh, the official release was, it didn't have any reviews, no critic reviews, because no critic could finish it in the normal span yep. they were given it they were given the <laughs> they were given their pre their their credit copies on sunday and then the drop happened on thursday mm-hmm. i believe no one could finish it in that time yeah because there is just so much content i mean the joke going around is that it has more dialogue in it than like any video game ever and that it's got like hundreds of endings and it's like all right let's be real most of those endings are basically the same with slightly different party members so slightly different dialogue mm-hmm. but it is a very massive game very high replayability uh i saw i saw a graphic on twitter i don't have it pulled up for us but it went through and was like what are the most popular classes what are the most popular race options mm, yeah what do you think the most popular class is class is paladin yep least class popular i believe is cleric that is correct what about the races oh. what are the top three uh elves i believe elves are three what? Uh, I know the lowest ones were gnomes and halflings. No, the lowest one was Gith Yankee, <laughs> with gnomes and halflings as well. I don't know the other. <laughs> uh, Half elf being the number one, with humans being number two, <laughs> which kind of tracks for regular D and D as well, with the popularity of classes and true and race options and all of that. Um, but yes, Baldur's Gate three out now on PC, also coming out on September third for PlayStation five. Uh, not an Xbox release date noted yet because apparently they have to like knock down some and change some parameters and kind of lower quality a little bit. That's interesting. Yeah, I heard that somebody. I, I saw somebody on TikTok, I believe, talk about it, like mm-hmm. it may accidentally become a PS5 exclusive. Just yeah, because, just by the nature of it. Just by the nature of it. I'm 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 saying, man, PlayStation Four and Xbox Series S are holding things back. You need to trim the fat. Let's move on. We got the technology now. We, yeah. We're, hey, we've got it. We're here now. Okay. 
You can you can go and buy a PS5 on Amazon. It's okay. You can get it's still expensive. Don't get it. It's still expensive. It's still expensive. They're always going. The consoles are always going to be expensive. But you do have to sunset. We have to sunset the the older gen at some point. At some point. All right. Those are the top stories. We're gonna. We're going to run through wrap-up items. We're doing this in a different order than I have in the doc, Sam. We're going to go Daggerheart first, impressions first. Uh, role pl- uh, Critical Role's new tabletop RPG blends crunch and narrative play in unique ways. Um, everyone kind of assumed that Daggerheart was going to be a D20 system. Turns out, after Gen Con playtesting happened, it's a 2D12 system. Uh, character creation is done through combining like physical cards onto a character sheet uh the d12s are represented by hope and fear uh when you roll them if you roll uh, you have to have different color d12 so you can delineate between the two consistently oh no having um, two different d12s what will, what will TTRPG I, players ever do i know right multiple die that, that that's not something that's not something we want in our, that's not something we want in our tabletop <laughs> RPGs. One single die of each. <laughs> that's it. Okay. So you roll two d twelve, and it's you can you combine the two, but whichever die had the higher result. So if you rolled like a nine and a three, and the nine was on the hope, it would be a twelve with hope. If it was like a six and a four with fear being the higher, it would be 10 with fear. And then difficulty class, and it, it, it gets into more narrative storytelling. But uh, from a lot of the people that were playtesting it, it was uh, approachable. It was more collaborative in the storytelling between players and dungeon masters. But at the same time, it's not going to be the D&D killer that a lot of people were thinking or expecting it to be. It's one of those things that I, as as far as I've seen, tar- starting to play other sorts of TTRPGs, uh, vastly more TTRPGs are a collaboration between the DM or the game master and the uh, players. Um, but also, as much as they are, you know, all created by different companies and, and all selling at the same time in the same space, they're not really competing. No. You can easily, you don't have to have brand loyalty, and, and you can easily acquire all these, sometimes for free online if you don't like the company. 5e.tools is not a website you should check out at all. Um, but yeah, you can... you can Ahoy, babies. Ahoy. Um, <laughs> 5e.tools. 5e period t-o-o-l-s is not something you should be partaking in unless you are a pirate of some kind no ho ho perhaps in a bay of some sort (laughs) 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 i love all uh, this is this is a quick sidebar about all of the streaming companies that are increasing the prices and like removing stuff from their services and then people are like green screening themselves with that behind them and then they're like putting on fucking uh uh, like try pirate, like try try point hats and like doing or or doing or doing like a, the sea shanties are starting to come back now because of it. It's fucking it's fucking great. Oh yeah, Daggerheart first impressions. Check them out. There's a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. If you want to learn more about it. It's also a side note. I don't know if you remember, but almost probably in our first year of of this of this podcast, we did a our favorite online tools. Um, yes. And we very specifically like we want to call out five e dot tools, but just know that like hey, it's not it's, so you, if you want to support the po- if you want to support them, you should probably buy it. And now we're like hey, five e dot tools. Yeah, it's almost like you're releasing too many products and they're all kind of shit. So and you the might company as well just is also look yeah, and yeah, it's a whole thing. Also. At Gen Con, uh, Jeremy Crawford did myriad interviews, and amongst them, he's been letting on that him, along with the D&D design team, have been paying attention to online feedback to playtests outside of their regularly requested surveys whenever they have an Unearthed Arcana drop. Specifically saying, he sees your Discord comments. At least a summary of them. (laughs) So if you are in the official uh, D&D discord server which is i believe open to anybody uh you can comment on whatever you want pertaining to one D. they're looking at everything for for the the one D release not just the surveys i still think the surveys are going to be the core way to communicate your thoughts with them though good good yeah. they should be listening yeah it's almost it's it's, it's almost like the people are are good people it's not the 1970s guys and, and by guys i mean people who are up top 
who want official feedback. It's not the 1970s. You can there's so much communication going on right now. You don't the you know you don't have to write a letter to the editor. You can just ping somebody in a Discord now. Yes, and he did point out that the social media team collects regular feedback from Reddit, Twitter, and the official D and D Discord are the ones that he calls out specifically. So, Fair yeah. Because a lot of great criticism comes on Twitter. Uh, last little wrap-up item. Dungeons & Dragons Online developer talks about the new Vecna Unleashed expansion. Dungeons & Dragons Online was first released 16 years ago, and it has not been slowing down since. Newest expansion, Vecna Unre- Unleashed, will be raising the stakes for the adventurers by pitting them against one of the most insidious D&D villains, Vecna. In Vecna Unleashed, players will explore the halls of the massive Morgrave University in the city of Sharn, and even venture into the Astral Plane itself very cool going to include new environments and characters also something i learned about uh dnd online well it's also going to have a lot of sweeping balance changes to the game but apparently it's free to play on pc hmm. i feel like we've mentioned that before but i just always forget that so cool. if you're if you're into if you like old school runescape or like world of warcraft kind of shit i think it, it looks like it's a similar vibe to that and it's free to play on pc so you know get on that MMORPGs, man. It's crazy. You gonna play? No. Okay. I don't have a my yeah, I don't have that uh that kind of time for, that's an, fair. for an MMORPG. That's fair. Alright, well, that's it for the news. Yeah. While Sam looks through the TikTok live chat, we record this podcast every other week uh, usually on Tuesdays live on the TikTok uh, and release it the following day on Wednesday, twelve thirty Eastern time on Apple, Google. YouTube Music, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, as well as on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, X, also known as Twitter. You can join our Discord server. We got an Amazon store. We got a merch store. We got Monday Night Magic live streams every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the TikTok live, as well as Moxfield deck lists. Sam, what do you got for us in the TikTok live chat? Cryptic Clue Mysteries asks, uh, as a complete newbie, what are your opinions on starter set versus essentials kit? Ooh, um, ooh. So the essential, the starter, the starter set is like a slimmed down version of D anD. d It gives you the core rules that you need to be able to play the game, and it also gives you a little starter adventure and some dice and some materials to actually play the game. That one is cheaper. The Essentials Kit is basically just a bundle of Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual. Um, the Starter Set is a great way to get started if you just want to play D&D for the first time and you don't have anybody that's ever done it in your life before, but you guys are kind of interested. Uh, it, it gives you some pre-made character sheets. Uh, it gives you the dice that you need to play. It gives you a pre-written little short uh, adventure. Uh, and it's also like 20, 20 bucks. So that's a really great way to go. The essentials kit is a bit more expensive, but if you are hooked on D&D, it's better than buying the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual, and the Player's Handbook a la carte. All of that being said, at this point, I would say uh, do not buy the essentials kit simply because at the beginning of next year, we're going to be getting the revision to the official D&D rules mm-hmm. with a new player's handbook, a new Dungeon Master's Guide, and a new Monster Manual. So if you're interested in trying D&D out, check out the starter set. If you want to look further, you can get the content of every book that's been released for D&D online, available PDF and on websites and everything. And most dollar stores have sets of seven do- polyhedra die for a dollar. That is true. They're ugly brown die, but you know. Or yeah, they get the job done. Amazon has some great deals on oh, like you can, ten. You can get ten sets of them for like five bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they're perfectly they're perfectly serviceable. Absolutely. All right. Six, Maybe get some graph paper as well. Sure. Sixteen zips asks any tips for someone who's trying to get into the hobby, which I feel is a good next step as well. Mm-hmm. Which is um, the best way is find people that already do it. Yeah. Find a, a, a sagely bearded individual who does a podcast. Uh, Every other week, or don't, or don't, because uh, we don't we don't really introduce people to D and D that much anymore. Uh, or busy. There, there's plenty of online creators as well on YouTube. Um, there's some great you know between 
uh, if you just want to watch D&D and pick up from there, I know a lot of people who started by watching Critical Role and just like learning mm-hmm. by, via osmosis, but then like Matt Colville is one of, the, one of my favorite creators who I you know, learned from. Um, there are plenty of creators out there who will give you some good advice oh, yeah. for getting started. Oh yeah, Matt Colville is amazing. Um, I, I learned a lot from the Dungeon Dudes, though I don't really like their content anymore because it's really boring. They are very dry men. Uh, say, a little less dry, but also kind of the same quality of YouTube video as Nerdarchy, but they kind of get more into the weeds about weird stuff mm-hmm. that I'm a fan of. Uh, also, Don't Stop Thinking has a, lot, has a great animated series on learning to play Dungeons and & Dragons and character creation and all that. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Moore asks, favorite commander deck? Ooh. Currently, Narset Enlightened Exile. Uh, yeah, and we, 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 we uh, play Magic every Monday, and we'll often answer this question. I think right now my favorite is Bruticlad, uh, Telcor Engineer. For the, We play mostly Commander. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the most powerful. Not it's not the best, but it's fun and has a unique mechanic, which I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bones uh, asks, why is a dragon? I've got one better for you. Who is a dragon? Do you want better? How is a dragon? How is a dragon? Uh, Taff, Traff's Tavern Podcast says, let's get some Sopranos pizza. What? Gear Hunt- Goodfell- Goodfellas pizza? No, I said Sopranos. Oh. Yeah, not- sure, why not? Might not be local to us. Yeah, Goodfella- Goodfellas is local to us, and that one's pretty good. That's also kind of a similar vein of uh, reference. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, Gearheads asks, would Baldur's Gate be a good entrance into D&D? Never played D&D myself. Uh, The people that I know that are playing and loving Baldur's Gate 3 right now are all people that played D&D first. So I don't know. But it also is a video game, so it's just easier to play. You play it by yourself. Um, I, I, I could see that. If you if you think you might like D&D and you like Baldur's Gate 3, you'll probably like D&D. Yeah. It, it's it's not yeah like you're saying it's not a one to one. If I like this, I'll like that. There is a good chance just based on the the fantasy and the like uh, how you build characters and mm-hmm. kind of how combat works. But yeah. that being said, the, uh, di- the dice rolling and DC mechanics yes. and all that. Uh, but that being said, once you sit down at a table, it's it's uh, it's very different. Very different. There are other people that can mess everything up. It's great. You need to be courteous to the people around you while also, you know, you got to throw your own weight around a little bit. Primark Paint says, I've never played d and I've always wanted to, but never have. I just paint. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I need to get back into painting minis a little bit. I've got a lot of unpainted things on a table downstairs. It's a whole... Ooh, this is interesting. From vibe. user long string of numbers, which... Uh, so they th- asks thoughts on the use of AI by solo writers for stuff like one shots in their own campaigns. Mm. Ooh, okay. I absolutely love that personally. I've seen there's a lot of great videos of people, specifically dungeon masters, using things like ChatGPT to like populate a city with NPCs that are interesting, or giving a list of names, or give it or writing like the outline of an adventure that involves certain things and then using AI to like refine that. I think I think tools like Jet Chat GPT and AI tools are going to be very useful for individuals. And if people want to use AI to generate campaigns and then go through and edit them and refine them and enhance them and do whatever, specifically to make products, as long as you are properly disclosing what you have done, I don't see anything wrong with that, Mm -hmm. personally. Yeah, I I agree. For the the individuals, for the people, um, great tool. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you're not, and especially I think a big part of it is you're not... Um, selling it, yeah, because you're not selling it as your own original thing. Uh, and let's be honest, as people who have dungeon master a lot, you, you, it's been a you know since the inception of D and D, it's you're stealing your favorite IPs anyway, and yeah. r- and covering them in a thin veneer. <laughs> uh, you know, back in the day, you, you, back in the you know, I I started by uh, trying to add in. Oh, what was one of the big ones I did? Oh, it's escaping me now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But anyway. Uh, the first ever campaign I ran was was Final Fantasy, like, 4 and 6. Yeah. And 15. 
<laughs> like that's that's what that's what the campaign was, and they were there for it. Uh, also, I had a uh, also I was like, all right, well, this is National Treasure Two Book of Secrets for this little puzzle, and this is going to be a little bit uh, Harry Potter, and this is going to be a little bit Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings, and this is it. That's just the nature of making your own campaign setting. Uh, Vexalia Rose asks. How do you see Baldur's Gate 3 affecting changes for TTRPGs? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, a lot of the changes, like we were, we were discussing earlier, Baldur's Gate 3 making quote-unquote improvements to the D&D formula. They were changing the mechanics to be more video game friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of things that are going to evolve tabletop RPGs are going to have to come from tabletop RPGs in my mind. Because video game conventions will only go so far. In D&D, they're only going to go so far in any other rule set for a tabletop mm-hmm. RPG. Uh, they're going to have to innovate themselves. They might draw inspiration from video games that might help create innovation for their games, but I don't think... I, don't, I mean, Baldur's Gate 3, I'm sure, is going to have plenty of influence, but it's too close to d and I think, to actually affect any real meaningful inspiration for TTRPGs, because it's basically one already. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's about the end of our questions. Interesting. Okay. Well, we only went for a little over an hour. I was expecting. We we really we really look. Hey, good on us, man. Give me some. Ooh, Ooh crispy. God damn. Okay. The power. Look of- at that waveform on the record. <laughs> that you can see exactly where we high five. That's amazing. Anyway, uh, this has been episode forty-seven of the Dungeon Bros podcast. If you have any requests or ideas for what we can do for episode fifty, it's kind of a big milestone. I feel. At least for us. Yeah. We only release every other week, so it's not like it's not like, oh, it's not even a year yet. Like, no, we've been doing this for like two years. Yeah. Which is cr- what? That's crazy, you know? And uh yeah. Going to SCG Con in Columbus, let us know. We might see you there. And by we I mean Sam. By we I mean me. <laughs> yes, of course. Again, you can get this podcast every other week on Wednesday at twelve thirty Eastern time on Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, Microwave Ovens, new smart fridges, maybe on your washing machine. Uh, we also have a TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Discord, all of that. We got various shops, merch store, Amazon store, Monday Night Magic live streams every Monday, and a Moxfield deck list for all of our MTG decks that we play on said Monday Night Magic live stream. Sam, do you got anything else? Nope. Okay, well, until next time, we love you very much. And in the meantime, peace 